Guys, our next speaker here, he's actually been described as the most unique man in mortgage. And as, as somebody who processes his own stuff and really operates as a one-man team, he's starting to grow a team now, but he outperforms companies that are four or five times bigger than he is and doing all the work himself. And so that's the reason why we wanted to make sure we got, we got Todd Bader to join us, uh, join us on the call today. What's going on, Todd? Oh, one second. I think I got you muted. My bad. There you go. Can you hear me now? Yeah, I got you. Okay. No, I'm doing great. How, how's everything going with you? Yeah, man. It's been a really, uh, it's been a really fun event, you know, just trying to, you know, it's always, it's always new when you're operating on the technology and stuff, but yeah, man, it's been, it's been pretty cool. Yeah. I look forward to hopefully being able to go back and watch some of the ones I missed this morning. So. Awesome. Awesome. Well, yeah, thanks so much for joining us. And uh, yeah, you know, I actually reached out to Chris Griffith and I said, how, how would you describe Todd? And he called you the most, the most uh, interesting, the most unique man in mortgage. That was his, <laughs> that was his title for you. I was like, wow, that's pretty amazing. So cool, man. Really appreciate you for jumping on here with us today. Yeah, I found that uh, the list of adjectives that are thrown around about me is uh, quite amusing at times. Uh, it's flattering. It's embarrassing. It's amusing. It's all those things wrapped into one. So I, I'm, just a, I'm just a loan officer trying to get by in the world is what I tell people. Awesome. Awesome, man. Well, I'm going to pin your video and uh, you want to take it away? Yeah. Yeah. So, um, you know, basically what I was going to talk about today is, you know, finding your positives in an uncertain world that we're in right now. And what I mean by that is, you know, I hear a lot of descriptions that is this 2008, nine all over again. You know, I mean, the lo young loan officers that have only been in business for five, six years, two years, whatever. I mean, there's a lot of uh, panic in some people thinking that, you know, they heard all the crazy stories from guys like me that have been around forever about 2008, nine. And uh, there's a lot of fear. I get it. You know, I mean, especially young loan officers that came in this business, knew nothing but good times, you know, were came out of whatever they were doing and suddenly they're making a hundred, 200, 300,000 a year. And now all of a sudden they're faced with, Oh my God, you know, what if this is 2008, you know, where guys were making nothing at times. So, so, you know, in every, in every downturn and every crisis, there's always pauses be had from it. And, you know, take this time to find your positives. Um, I'll give you a story about mine, you know, in 2008 and nine, um, you know, I went into those years as a guy that was doing, was fairly successful. Um, you know, I think I had decent amount of success and I was probably 70% 70 70 subprime, 30% prime. I'd always liked the prime market, but you know, I wasn't the, I was a subprime guy back then, as most of us were, I think, a good amount of us were. The banks were doing all the prime and the brokers like me were getting the scraps. Um, you know, 2008, and nine happened and suddenly everything I knew was turned on its head. Subprime was gone. Um, you know, even the prime business, the 5% and 10% downs were gone. I mean, if you guys were, if anybody, anybody that was around back then knows that the MI, the uh, MI companies like AIG and them, they were bankrupt. They were on the verge of insolvency. And suddenly, you know, over, it seemed like overnight, even though it happened over about a year period, but we went from having, we went from having a, being able to do a 580 credit score, stated income, stated assets, no money down, throw them at a house, make five, six points on the loan. It was a wild, wild west. And suddenly we were faced with everything's gone except for 20% down, clean conventional business for the most part. Um, the larger mortgage banker guys that had uh, their eagles and stuff that could do FHA, they were able to. A small broker shop like me, we weren't even able to do FHA at the time. The HARP program was on, at the beginning stages was only for refinancing to the current lender. So again, a guy like me was locked out of that. So in 2008, late 2008, early nine, I basically was faced with a decision, you know, do I stay in the business that I love and I've been in for years and refocus my attention to a totally different way of life and find a different way of life in the business? Or do I get out of the business and go sell something else? I was actually had a guy offer me a position selling software and I actually thought about it for about a minute and a half and uh, thought, eh, 
you know, I'm going to live or die by this business. You know, I've been in it too long. You know, I love it too much. So during that time, you know, I, I had to refocus everything and, and I became the clean conventional guy, you know, by going out there, pounding the pavement, uh, meeting title companies, meeting realtors. You know, I've never been a cold call realtor guy that says, hey, let's go have coffee. I've never had coffee with a realtor in my life. I don't even drink coffee. So it'd be a Red Bull for me. Um, but I don't, I don't operate that way. You know, I mean, I, I did it organically on the street, meeting people through listings that I was doing the purchase for. You know, I was buying leads online. I was doing Zillow leads. I hate to use the Z term, but at the time they weren't that bad of a company, actually. That was before they went public and got a little greedy, I think. Um, but it enabled me to meet realtors. And then I just went out there and I thought, you know what, what's the one person in the transaction that the realtor's the closest to and the realtor listens to, and here's the realtor complaint when there's a problem. And guess what? That's the escrow officer, the title company. So I made a point going out there and making friends with every title company I could get in front of and just befriending them and saying, Hey, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm here for you. I'll do whatever I can to make your life easier as a title company. You know, introduce me to your realtors, you know, and that's how I did it. You know, um, again, there was a lot more to it. We don't have time to, you know, I'd take hours to go into that, but, but that was my positive back in 2008. You know, I mean, at the time it sure didn't seem like it, you know, I mean, in 2008 for the year, I made less money than I do in some weeks now, you know, um, you know, it was, it was a disastrous year. It was a rough year. It was, it was a, come to Jesus moment year, I would call it, you know? Um, but you know what, looking back on it 10, 12 years later, it was the greatest thing that ever happened in my career. A, it made me focus and get laser focused on what I do now. It made me in, insulate myself to downturns like today because now we're watching non-QM blow up all over the place. We're watching FHA and VA being uh, tightened up. You know, I've seen a couple posts on some of the Facebook groups just over the last four or five days saying, you know, everybody wishes they were Todd now. Well, you know, it's like, I guess there is a point to that because, you know, my business, even though it slowed a little bit, I mean, I'm doing clean conventional. That's not really been that affected. I mean, yeah, there's some issues with certain lenders right now, not being priced in the market properly. Although that one lender will come back strong as ever. Um, but you know, I, I, I was, I took the, the negatives of eight and nine, worked through it, built a great business out of it. And now I'm insulated from a lot of what's happening because of that. And because I've learned that lesson in 2008, nine, and I'm ready for today. And I'm not really sweating right now about the business, you know? So that's, that's kind of what I did to pull a positive out of a negative back then. And you guys, Every one of you should be out there doing the same right now. I mean, I'm not saying you should become the clean conventional guy like myself, you know, stay out of my sandbox people, you know, but there's a lot of positives out there. Um, think about, look, just look on Facebook at what you see some of your competitors posting right now. I see guys out there posting Realtors, I'm still doing 550 credit score FHAs. I'm still doing non-QM. I'm still doing this. I'm still doing that. Well, you know what? That's great. I, I, I get, I got an email. I don't do non QM, but I got an email like once a week from this company called Sprout. I don't know them. I'm not knocking them. I don't know them. I hear a lot of people talk about them. For weeks now, they keep saying, oh yeah, we're going to be back. You know, yeah, we took a pause. We're going to be back. We'll be funding loans again on this date. And that day comes and then we get another email saying, well, now we're moving the goalpost down the road. What do you think that's doing to those realtor relationships? That guy that's out there telling these realtors, I'll do all that same business I was doing before. Well, guess what? He's destroying relationships because he's convincing these realtors he can still do that business. And then when it falls apart, you know, I can tell you this from experience. I do a lot of real estate, real estate business and I have a lot of great relationships with realtors. The thing, two things they hate, they hate getting blown up on Mondays with marketing calls. And more importantly, they hate working for weeks and weeks on a loan, or I should say a sale for them only to have it fall apart at the end because the loan didn't perform. That's the biggest, that's going to be the thing that's going to blow up a relationship. So don't, don't go out there and try to be everything to every realtor. Wait and wait like a lion or a tiger and, and, uh, and waiting in the bushes waiting to pounce. When that guy is advertising, he's still doing all them crazy loans. 
be there for when them loans blow up. Be there and say to the realtor, hey, yeah, I can't do it either, but I'll never over promise and under deliver. And a lot of that's happening right now. So now is more than ever the time for you guys out there that have told me, hey, I'm struggling meeting realtors. I'm struggling developing relationships. I meet them and they say they'll use me, but they never do. Now's your time because you're gonna see a lot of current relationships blowing up with realtors over loan officers, not keeping them properly informed, not keeping them updated on what's going on in the market, and, and having way too positive of an attitude about the fringe products that we know are struggling right now. I mean, let's face it, if you got a jump, I, I, I just told two realtors over the weekend, two different clients had jumbo loans that they were looking to get pre-qualified for. I flat out told them, I said, I don't have a, I, I, I can't do a 10% down jumbo today. I just don't have that product today. I'll have it in a month or two or three, but that's not gonna help you today. So you know what, take that customer, find out who their local bank is. Yeah, we all, nobody wants to hear Bank of America Chase or whatever, but you know what, that's where the best jumbo products are right now for the most part. So guide that realtor to the proper place and they'll appreciate it in the future. And they'll remember that you took care of them without worrying about your own paycheck. And that's what I mean about the market right now. There's a lot of pauses to be had if you just look underneath the surface for where you can become that guy or gal that figures out where you can come in and, and pick up a realtor or pick up a financial planner or pick up whatever it may be, you know, a, a, a real estate investor or whoever. Um, that's crises. Um, I think it was Rahm Emanuel back in the Obama administration had a quote that once said that never let a good crisis go to waste. Um, I think I'm quoting that exact word for word, but if not, that was the subject of it. Um, it was, it was about the 2008 nine meltdown, you know, and, uh, you know, I'm, I'm not a huge ROM fan, but I love the quote. Absolutely love, love, love the quote because it's right. Take this crisis and turn it into something that's gonna benefit you and your customers and your realtors. You know, go out there, find, find your positive in this nightmare that we're living through right now. Because this is a short-term thing. This isn't 2008. We're not gonna drag this on for years. The MI companies are still in business. The government's funding things to keep this from falling apart like it did in 2008. 2008 and nine, the government was asleep at the wheel. I mean, by the time they jumped in, it was way too late for a lot of these companies. And they actually, as much as we all hate this forbearance stuff because they made it sound too easy, yeah, they did, but that's our job to educate the people. But more importantly, they did it to save a massive amount of foreclosures, which would crush our industry you know, and would cause another 2008. By putting all these people into deferment, forbearance, and everything else, our job is to school them and, and, and reach out to every one of our clients, no matter how many that is, and make sure they understand the process and make sure they don't go into it unwittingly when they shouldn't. But God forbid, this is, the, this is a good thing because if we had massive amount of foreclosures, we would see housing prices start dropping. We would see a glut of inventory and then the whole system starts failing on us. Yeah, there's some issues right now. The government needs to come in as FHFA and Mark Calabrio needs to come in. He needs to shore up, you know, the, uh, the forbearance stuff that's going on with these lenders. So the Fannie and Freddie stops collecting payments from the servicers. That's all going to probably work itself out. I, I can't imagine it won't. Maybe it's dragging its feet longer than it should, but they're not going to let that system implode as much as we like to hate on Mark Calabrio. You know, the rest of the Fed will step in and take care of this, I believe. Um, but yeah, I mean, thank God they did step in to do something because we would be facing a lot of foreclosures. But again, use this as your positive. I mean, if I could do it through 2008 and nine, which was the worst that I should ever see in my lifetime and in everybody's lifetime, I hope, um, you know, I came out of it stronger than ever. And I plan on coming out of the other side of this one equally strong. I've already picked up one realtor in the last week that was fed up with a local mortgage company that I won't even say, I'm not here to bash them, but they were just fed up. I mean, they had two fundings that went south at the last minute and it wasn't anything I could do. It, one was a non-QM loan and the other was a uh, low score FHA. I don't even do FHA or VA unless I have to. Um, even though I couldn't do the loans, the realtor appreciated that I got on the phone with her and walked her through what I saw in the marketplace. She then asked this loan officer, this our company, some poignant questions that I gave her. 
found out that the guy was just he was just basically reaching for straws because he didn't have the he didn't have the intestinal fortitude to be honest with her and say these two loans are dead. He should have done that a week and a half before they got to that point. She would have appreciated it. She wouldn't have liked it, but she would appreciate it. And now she's, you know, starting to, she's already sent me a couple of prequels over the weekend. And there's a realtor that I knew on the fringes that never had sent me anything. And it's all because I took the time to explain the facts of life where she liked them or not versus somebody else that just couldn't bring himself to tell her the hard truth. So if anything right now, don't be afraid to say no. Don't be afraid to tell somebody the hard truth that as much as we don't want to hear it, you got to be honest with people. I mean, you'll, nobody wants to be, nobody wants to, I, the, your previous person was talking about the smoke being blown on her and stuff. You know, I said, that's right. I mean, nobody wants to have smoke blown up their ass for weeks, waiting and waiting and waiting. And then all of a sudden, boom, at the last minute, sorry, we can't do it. Be honest up front. I mean, it's the best medicine for everybody involved and you will earn the respect of your referral partner and you'll pick up referral partners that have lost the respect for their current loan officers. So um, that's kind of where I'm at. I mean, I think I used up most of my time here, Nick, but anything you got for me or any uh, follow-ups or? Yeah, man, definitely. That was, that was super awesome. I know a lot of people were saying that you're, what you're saying definitely resonated with them. I'm going to go, go look through here and see Todd agreed 34 years originating taught me that quick, that a quick no is so much better than a long and painful drawn out one. Just rip off the bandaid, eat the frog. Yeah. Okay. That's awesome. Be ready and opportunistic. Yeah. Everybody just saying like, Oh, definitely what you're saying is really, is really resonating with them. You know, in terms of being honest, how, how did you get that? The realtor that you just, the realtor that you just mentioned a second ago, how did, uh, did, did you just find that lady through social media? Is that how you knew her? No, she was a um, listing agent on a loan I did about eight, nine weeks ago. Um, and, you know, I, I kind of like it. Like, I, I'm pretty busy now, so I'm picky about who I deal with, right? I, I don't reach out to every single realtor I meet. I won't deal with newbies that are part-timers and stuff because they, they're time wasters for me. You know, but not, that's not true for everybody. I'm, I'm busy, so I can be selective. Um, this lady, I really liked, I thought that she, you know, we, we had run across each other off and on for years now. And, you know, I started reaching out to her saying, Hey, but I wasn't expecting anything. She even told me right up front. She goes, I got this guy I've been dealing with for years. I'll keep you in mind if I ever get somebody that is really super shopper because I, she knew I was low cost, no, no fees, low cost. And then out of the blue, she just called me the other day and said, Hey, can you walk me through something? She goes, I've got these two deals. She started giving me all the facts. She started sharing me of sharing a bunch of emails between her and the other loan officer. And immediately I could see what the problem was immediately. It was so plain as day. I mean, it wasn't even funny. Again, one of them was non QM and it was like, those are pretty much dead, you know? And, and sure enough, you know, I just gave her some ammunition to go back to him at. And after she talked to him, he came clean with her and said, wow, I've been hoping to find a home for these because I really don't want to lose these deals. And, you know, she didn't say it to him, but she said it to me, she goes, yeah, she goes, he just kept talking about he didn't want to lose the deals and he just lost my business. You know, I said, hey, yeah, good for me, bad for him, but, you know, he should have done his job better. So I don't feel sorry for him. Yeah, makes sense to me. Um, I saw somebody was asking about, um, because do you, do you still process all your own loans? Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I heard you at the beginning, you said something about building a team. I, 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 I hired a guy that, I was gonna hire as an assistant, but I just can't let go of the control. I'm a control freak, I'm an OCD control freak, okay? So instead of hiring him to be my assistant, I realized that he was doing mostly FHA, VA business before he came, was gonna come work for me. So instead of hiring an assistant, I just hired a loan officer that I can pass all my government deals to that I've been passing off to loan officers that are companies for years. You know, so for years, I've literally given government loans to other brokers in my market, you know, and all I ask for in return is a thank you. I don't really care. I've been so busy. It's like, I don't want to deal with FHA. I don't want to deal with VA, you know. Um, so I hired this guy. He's not my assistant. So, yes, I'm still doing everything from start to finish by myself. Adam is taking on the surplus that I don't want to do like FHA, VA. And also I'm giving them a lot of my refis because I don't do a lot of refis, um, I'm so busy with purchase business. I now have Adam taking on some of my refi business. Okay. Gotcha. 
And what, uh, one other, one last question. Um, Manny asks about your work schedule and your work routine. Like, what is that? Can you walk us through? I don't know if like maybe if uh, quarantine has changed it or what is a normal work day for you? Well, I've been working from home for 12 years. So quarantine's done nothing but mean I can't find toilet paper. So um, other than that, chloride paper, you know, other than that issue and not, no restaurants and stuff. Um, yeah, it's about the same for me work wise. So my, my work schedule is a little different. I'll be honest with you, um, but I'll give it to you. Um, I walk in, you know, I have an office built in my house, in my house. Um, I walk in here at 730 every morning, you know, start clearing emails. Um, you know, just what I call the busy kind of clearing the cobwebs on my head work, clear all that out. I sit down at eight o'clock. I have the same breakfast every day of my life, a blueberry muffin with a diet Pepsi. Never waver. It's always the same. I don't have to think about what I'm having for breakfast. I don't have to waste time on breakfast. Um, and then I work. I work till about noonish. Um, when quarantine is not in effect, usually around noon, 1230, I head over to LA Fitness and just jump on the treadmill and walk for half hour, 45 minutes, do a little workout here and there. Um, just to clear my head. Um, or maybe I go meet somebody for lunch, come back, work throughout the afternoon. Around five o'clock, I shut down for, I try at five, it doesn't always work. I shut down usually from five, to, five or six until about 10 o'clock when my wife goes to bed. Um, and from about 10, 15 until about 2 a.m., I work. Um, I'm a night owl. I find that late at night, I get so much more done because the phones aren't ringing. I don't have to answer emails or texts. So during the day I'm selling, at night I'm processing and clearing conditions and things like that. And that's my work schedule. Not, not for everybody. Yeah, not for everybody, but man, I appreciate you sharing that for sure. You know, cause I think oftentimes people just wonder how you're able to get all the things that you do done in a day, you know? And, and, and I've told other people too, you know, not everybody's a night owl. But if you're not a night out, you're probably a morning person. So work from 5 a.m. until 8 a.m. doing the stuff I do late at night. You know, you're not obligated to answer your phone or do anything during those times. You'll get so much done during those times when you can shut the world off. So whether it's late at night, early in the morning, find find what works for you. Yeah. Yeah, that's a great, that's a great piece of advice, man. Well, I really appreciate you joining us and sharing some of your time with us today you know, for the Living Legends Summit, I know by far you are one of the most requested from the broker side of things. So just wanted to just tell you, thank you so much for being on here. Yeah, thanks for having me. Have a great day. All right, Todd, we'll talk later on. Thank you. What's going on, everybody? It's Nick Carpenter here at the 2019 Legion of Loan Officers Fall Conclave, Miami. We're having a blast. Let me show you guys what we've got going on here. What's going on, yeah! everybody? We're gonna drop some knowledge. Get, get uncomfortable. Like, how can I let people in a little bit more? You're gonna go through this side right here. Yes, 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 yes. It's all about like, yeah, tactics are great, but at the end of the day, authenticity is, is gonna win. You see the progression of who I am and who I'm becoming on social media. That is what social media is about. You guys might struggle through it a little bit more, right? But that's about being comfortable with being uncomfortable. And whenever you have that voice, it's like, nah, I shouldn't post that. Then you post it. Dude, that I built a team of eight players around me. Oh!